Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at angles in standard position and coterminal angles. So first, let's talk about angles in standard position. An angle is in standard position when the angle is drawn in the coordinate plane and its vertex is on the origin. Not only that, but the angle is formed by two rays with that common vertex, just like any other angle. Um, but remember, this vertex is on the origin. In trigonometry, one side of the angle is called the initial side and the other is called the terminal side. So we draw our coordinate plane. The vertex is right here. The initial side would be one ray and the terminal side would be the other ray. The initial side lies along the positive x-axis. So it starts at the origin and it goes along the positive x-axis. The terminal side just lies somewhere in the plane. The direction of the movement is indicated by an arc with an arrow pointing at the terminal side. So I could draw it like this to indicate that's the angle I'm talking about. I could hypothetically also have an angle going this way, if that's the one that I was referring to. If the angle is formed by a clock counterclockwise movement, then its measure is positive. So the first one I drew, this one, this would have a positive angle measure. This would be positive because I moved in the counterclockwise direction. If the angle is formed by a clockwise movement, then it is a negative angle measure. So this one here, moving clockwise, this one would have a negative angle measure. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to sketch each angle in standard position and then we're going to determine the quadrant that it terminates in. Now, when we're drawing these, um, let's. what I usually do is I start with the, what I call the four corners. So depending on where the terminal side lands, and we're talking, I'm going to talk about degrees, if the terminal side and the initial side are both along the positive x-axis, that would be zero degrees. If the initial side is here and the terminal side goes straight up, straight straight up there we go that would be 90 degrees right it makes the l like a 90 degrees if it goes to towards the negative uh, x-axis that's 180 degrees if it goes down the, the negative y-axis that would be 270 degrees and then if it does a complete circle remember that's 360 degrees so i would use those as a guide to tell me which quadrant the angle will terminate in now of course i say this and then i look at the very first angle measure and it's negative so with the negative, everything moves the opposite direction. Zero degrees stays exactly where it is, but this time the 90 degrees goes down. So it would be down this way. This would be negative 90 degrees. Going through quadrant four to quadrant three to have a terminal side lie on the, the negative x-axis, that would be negative 180 degrees. To have it come up all the way up here, that would be 270 degrees negative. And if it did a complete circle going clockwise, then it would have a measure of negative 360 degrees. So we're going to use that as our guide. So negative 60 degrees, that's in between 0 and negative 90, a little bit closer to 90. So we would say here, we can put an arrow, and then we draw the arc with an arrow pointing that way, and this indicates negative 60 degrees. The next example, uh, oh wait, sorry. And we're supposed to say which quadrant it terminates in. This one quad, uh, terminates in quadrant 4. 135 degrees, so again, I'm going to label, this is 0 degrees, up here is 90 degrees, over here is 180 degrees, down here is 270 degrees. 135 is in between 90 and 180, it's exactly halfway between them. So I'm going to start at the origin, and I'm going to go, let's stop that, I'm going to go up, uh, and then it's a positive movement, so we go counterclockwise, and we would say this one terminates in quadrant 2. So in case you need a review of the quadrants, I'll just come up here. This one's quadrant one, this is quadrant two, quadrant three is down here, and this is quadrant four. Whoops, sorry, I was just trying to make that better. Okay, for when we're dealing with uh, radians, as the last two are, and of course the first one's negative, so we're going to forget that it's negative for a second. As we go around the four corners of radians, we would start with zero radians, you might recall from a previous slide that 90 degrees is the exact same thing as pi over 2. Uh, 180 degrees is the same thing as pi. That's good to know if you're converting between radians and degrees. Down here, this is 3 pi over 2. I don't want it to go onto the blue because I think it like wigs out. And then over here, if you do a complete rotation, that would be 2 pi. Since this first one is negative, we're going to do the exact same thing we did when we had the negative degrees. We would start here, but now we're going to go down, and this would be negative pi over 2. If we go all the way to the negative x-axis, that would be negative pi. If we go up to the positive y-axis, that's going to be negative 3 pi over 2. 
And if we do a full clockwise motion, we would be back at negative 2 pi. So negative 4 pi, uh, pi over 4. Pi over 4 would be in between 0 and 2 pi. So it's going to be in between 0 and negative 2 pi, and it's exactly halfway between. And we'll draw our arrow going down. And negative pi over 4 terminates in quadrant 4. Last but not least, pi over 6. So pi over 6, uh, we're going in the positive, so we have 0. Up here is pi over 2. Whoops. Kind of looks like a tic-tac-toe board. Let's try my pi again. Pi over 2. Nope, that was not good. Pi and 3 pi over 2. Pi over 6 is in between 0 and pi over 2. And it's going to be closer to 0. It's going up because it's positive, And this terminates in quadrant number 1. So that was a look at just drawing angles in standard position. The next thing we want to talk about with angles is coterminal angles. So you might guess from the name coterminal. Co usually means like shared. And so these are angles that share a terminal side. Coterminal co angles are angles in standard position and whose terminal side ends in the same place. Each position in the coordinate plane will have infinitely many coterminal angles, only one of which will be in between 0 degrees and 360 degrees or 0 and 2 pi radians. So those are usually the ones we like, or the, the, the ones that are between 0 and 360 or 0 and 2 pi. Um, if they're not given in that form, we might want to switch it to that form. To find coterminal angles, uh, and we're given angles in degrees, we can add or subtract 360 from that given measure. And that makes sense, because let's just say we're going to draw 45 degrees, which would be right here. So that would be positive 45 degrees. But if I went this way up and around, this would be negative 315 degrees. And you can see the difference between 45 degrees and negative 315 degrees is 360 degrees. And you can also see from the arcs I drew that those are almost a complete, well, they are a complete circle. Um, I just didn't draw them that great, but that's a complete circle, which remember circles have degree measures of 360. If we want to find coterminal angles, but we're given them in radians, we can add or subtract 2 pi from the given measure. So let's practice finding coterminal angles. We're going to find one positive angle and one negative angle that's coterminal to the given angle. This means that all the slides are going to have conterminal instead of coterminal. Okay, but they're coterminal to the given angle. <clears throat> then we're going to draw all three on the diagram. So first let's start with, so we're given 42 degrees. To find another positive angle that is coterminal to it, we can add 360 to it. So to find a positive, we're going to add 360, and this is going to give us 402 degrees. So there's one coterminal angle, and another one would be if we took negative 360, or we, we subtracted 360 from 42. If we do that, that would be 8, that would be a 1, and this would be a 3. So we, 318 degrees negative, excuse me, negative 318 degrees would also be coterminal. So we're going to just write these out nicely. So we have 402 degrees, negative 318 degrees are both measures that are coterminal. I'm just going to double check my work. Oh, it is 318. Oh, it looks like I wrote 3180 though. Oh boy. Okay, great. So when we draw these, let's start with 42 degrees. 42 would be in between 0 degrees and 90 degrees, a little bit closer to 0 degrees. To represent 42, we can just do this. For 402, that means that we make a complete circle. So we're going to start here. We're going to make a complete circle. So now we're at 360, and now we're going 42 degrees past 360. So this one would be 402 degrees. This one was 42 degrees. And then last but not least, we want to represent negative 318. Well, the fact that it's negative means we go clockwise. This one's going to be really big. So we're going to start at the initial side. Oh, stop. And we're going to do one complete circle. Oh, no, wait. We don't need to do a complete circle. Stop that. We don't need to do a complete circle. We're just going to stop right here. And this would be negative 318 degrees. All right. We have negative 110 degrees in this example. So to find a positive angle measure, let's see if we add 360, if that's going to get us in the positives. It looks like it will. If I add 360 to negative 110, that would be 250 degrees. So there's a positive uh, coterminal angle. Remember, this is coterminal, not conterminal. 
And to find the negative, we'll take negative 110 degrees and we'll subtract 360 or add negative 360. That's going to give us negative 470. So we have negative 110 is going to be coterminal to negative 470, which will be coterminal to 250 degrees. And again, these are just three, but there are infinitely many, right? Because I can just keep adding 360, adding 360, adding 360, or taking away 360, taking away 360. Drawing negative 110, so zero degrees, I'm going to go down to negative 90 degrees to get those negatives. Negative 180 degrees, negative 270 degrees, and then back here at negative 360 degrees. So negative 110 is in between negative 90 and negative 180, closer to 90, so maybe it's right here. We're going to indicate the negative 110 by using a clockwise motion. Then to represent negative 470, so we're going to do... This time we do have to do a complete circle, so we're going to do a complete circle around. There's negative 360, then we're going to go 110 more, and this one is our negative 470. And lastly, 250, so I start on the initial side, and then I end at the terminal side, going counterclockwise to give me that positive measure. So you can see they all end in the same place, although they all look very different. Okay, we need some examples with radians too. Let's be fair here. Um, so when we want to find coterminal angles, we want to add 2 pi or subtract 2 pi. So for the positive, let's add 2 pi, negative 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 1. If we're going to add fractions, we need a common denominator, so we're going to multiply by 2 and 2. Now we have negative 3 pi plus 4 pi all over 2, and we end up with pi over 2. To find a negative, we're going to take negative 3 pi over 2 and subtract 2 pi. Remember, 2 pi is the same as 4 pi over 2, so I'm going to just skip that step where I show I'm subtracting and just say, okay, we're going to subtract 4 pi, which would be 4 pi over 2. Uh, negative 3 pi minus 4 pi is negative 7 pi over 2. All right, so this is going to be coterminal with, what did we say, pi over 2? which will be coterminal with negative 7 pi over 2. And if we write our radians, we would have 0. This one down here is negative pi over 2. Over here is negative pi. Up here is negative 3 pi over 2. And look at that. What we're given is right here. It's that positive y-axis. So to represent that first one, we're going to do a clockwise motion to get there and that's going to be our negative 3 pi over 2. For pi over 2, we're going to just go start on the initial side and go counterclockwise, and that's going to give us pi over 2. And then for negative 7 pi over 2, we need to do a complete circle. I regret everything because I have no room for my complete circle. We're going to do really big. We're going to do a complete circle going clockwise. So there's negative 2 pi, but now we need to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. stop and there's negative 7 pi over 2. And that's the examples of looking at angles in standard position and coterminal angles.